Okay, we'll please. start recording now. <laughs> Anyways, I, I guess what I was wondering if, you, if, you, if you'd be willing to do a quick interview about uh, why you have a camera with you and what you think it makes. Uh, yes. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Um, I guess the first thing is, can you say and spell your name? Uh, Abraham, Dr. Abraham Weisfeld. I just got my accreditation April 17th. I'm oh, a doctor in political science now. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Mm -hmm. Weisfeld is W-E-I-Z-F-E-L-D. Great. And Abraham is A-B-R-A-H-A-M? A-B-R-A-H-A-M, yeah. Fabulous. So, I mean, you have a camera on you. Why, uh, why I guess, do you bring a camera to something like this? I've created a media on YouTube, you know, which is a channel of uh, political reports that uh, uh, follow the demonstrations here during the whole uh, general strike of the student movement. I was uh, filming all the major demonstrations here. Because, you know, after a while people forget or uh, are forgotten about by the media, you know. But once you, you know, video it, you know, and you have it on YouTube and permanently, then the demonstration of three, four hundred thousand people that took place in Montreal here during the general strike cannot be forgotten. Right. You know, like it's just an, an incredible sort of archive to have. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, I can archive the police, you know, and uh, show what they're doing to demonstrators and uh, demonstrate, you know, that they are violating, you know, the public rights of freedom of association under Article 43, on Article 3 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms of the Person here in Quebec. Mm -hmm. And so, are you, do you just film like the entirety of the protest when you come out? Or are you looking for things, any particular things? Or I try to stay in the front line, you know, to, to see you know where the police are trying to um, encircle people, to uh, capture them and arrest them, and also to see uh, what they're trying to do to stop the demonstration from taking place. Right. And it's so arbitrary, you know. Like there were two demonstrations uh, recently that were held by the police, even though there was no itinerary. The uh, Journée de la Terre, you know, that Earth Day. Right. There was no itinerary for that. It was a spontaneous demonstration, and police were helping it, you know, to march through the streets, you know, led by anarchists, even, you know. Yeah. But it, it didn't matter, you know, because it was, you know, like a politically kosher kind of thing, you know, for people to be demonstrating about. So they couldn't stop it. You know, they would look, you know, like politically intolerant. So they discriminate. Right. And, uh, and then another one was uh, the, uh, the student demonstration that took place uh, just before the election and the demonstration against austerity. Yes. And that was tolerated because there was 10,000 students and they couldn't do anything to stop it, you know, and they knew. But a demonstration like today, you know, when there was going to be a limited number of people, some some few hundreds, you know, like who are willing to get arrested, in fact, they're going to clamp down, you know. And it's a military-style operation that they have going here with the security, uh, the, 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 the uh, Brigade des Amis, uh, the riot squad of the Sécurité de Québec, and, uh, and the mobilization of the police on overtime pay, of course. You know, like this overtime pay, you know, gets to be ridiculous. You know, when you total it all up, you know, during the general strike and everything, it was like about $10 million that was spent on overtime pay for the police, you know, and they don't talk about this, the media doesn't talk about this, you know, and it's considered to be a necessary expense, you know, even though all those people arrested, you know, under uh, the uh, the law 78, or uh, it was at the time, yeah, was, yeah. Was, was was abrogated by Pauline Marois on the first day in which he was elected, as well as the elimination of the uh, tuition fee increase was eliminated the very first day. After that, I was downhill for the PQ, but, you know, the first day was okay, you know. Yeah, not a bad start, but... <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, you know, so it's it's uh, the police have gone wild, you know, gone rogue, you know, uh, here in Maria, and they're and they're allowed to do so, you know, by the uh, majority still of the uh, administration, municipal administration, which uh, took a vote on the uh, matter of the uh, Reglement uh, P6, uh, right, yeah. which uh, gives the police the power to um, declare a demonstration illegal because they haven't supplied its itinerary. However. Even when there has been an itinerary supplied, and I remember the last May 1st when the demonstration was clearly, and this one too is announced that it's going to go to the uh, to that bourgeois club on the uh, Rue Notre Dame, where all the uh, politicians hang out with the businessmen, oh, really? you know, to exchange money. <laughs> so, you know, everybody knows that we're supposed to be marching down to that club, you know, and so the itinerary has been provided, but they claim the right whether or not they're going to approve of the itinerary. Right. Okay. Of the route, you know. Now, in terms of bringing a camera along and filming it, uh, I mean, is, has, does it change the dynamic of a protest? Does it make a difference for how things go? It protects or? the uh, protest to mm -hmm. some degree, yeah. There was even one time uh, during the, uh, the demonstration against police brutality right. when I was there filming, and I was up in the balcony, you know, uh, filming, you know, uh, the, um, 
this sort of yeah, uh, you know, when people were surrounded and captured. Right. And I was filming into that, you know, from the gallery, and there were some people there standing there with me, you know, on the street a little further away, who hadn't been captured. And so the police came and said, you know, you either have to leave or you're going to be arrested. So I come down the stairs, and I say to the, the, the cop, you know, like, are you telling me I can't film? And he says, no, 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 I didn't say that. No, no, I've got it all on film too, you know. Yeah. So these sort of things, you know, like, you know, are good to get on film, you know, because mm. it sort of establishes a right, yeah. you know, to be able to present to report on it, you know, to film it and to document it, you know. So they can't get away with, you know, as much as they would have mm. otherwise, you know. Do you find they treat you differently when they see a camera in your hand? Yeah, they leave me alone. Yeah? Really? Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, you hear about it in the United States sometimes, you know, people go to film the police and try to turn Camera yeah, yeah, they consider it to like be that. illegal, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. is that none of that here? They can't get away with that here, yeah. you know, because they're already on sort of, you know, on, on uh, um, you know, shaky grounds here, you know, because Quebec, you know, like is a very, you know, volatile society, you know. So, you know, one day, you know, you have a, a liberal government and then suddenly you have a PQ government. And, you know, like, even though we have a liberal government here now, you know, if the police here do something embarrassing, it reflects upon the liberal government because they won't do anything to stop the police. Right. So. So there's big political ties. Yeah. Case. So the, 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 the police have, a, and you know, are conscious of having a political responsibility because they're acting as a political police. Right. You know, it's not a um, fascist uh, state. You know, as some people shout. It's a. Uh, but the police have assumed the powers of uh, a political authority. They are a political police. You know, which decide which demonstration is going to be allowed, which demonstration is not going to be allowed. Right. You know, and that is a power that is supposed to be, you know, only in the hands of a judge or the politicians. Not even the politicians, you know, because there's a Charter of Rights, you know, which decrees, you know, the freedom of association. So, you know, supposedly it's, it's you know, um, jurisdiction is supposed to be, you know, like in the hands of a judge, but the police are acting as if they are the judge, as if you're on trial, you see, and you've been judged, you know, guilty just by being present here. Right. So uh, how long have you been coming out to these things? Oh, all my life. Yeah. Well, no, 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 not all my life. Since 1967, ah, so I've been politically active. Tired, yeah. Almost. So, uh, you know, I started, you know, with the uh, anti-Vietnam War demonstrations, right. which started off small, mm -hmm. and uh, and then we grew to, you know, like in Toronto, where I was from, uh, we grew to about 20,000 wow. people, you know, and then it started to have an effect, you know, and then in the United States, there were demonstrations at one point, you know, that uh, that freaked out the authorities so much that they began to clamp down and they uh, they shot four students at Kent State mm -hmm. University and the next I had a day professor was that was at Kent State at the time actually really yeah so after that there's a general student strike in the United States which isn't mentioned very often you know so it should be mentioned here now we've got it on the record and uh, and this general strike you know was it was like a, a revolt like a, you know which you know was leading to a revolutionary dynamic you know I think it was Nixon who was in power at the time uh, 60 could have been either Nixon no, or it was LBJ. Before Nixon. So then it would have been LBJ. It was still LG, LBJ, yeah. And, uh, and, and they got worried. They started to get worried, you know, because there was also a Vietnam veterans against the war, you know, which potentially could have grown, you know, to be immense, you know, because they lost 50,000 soldiers in that yeah. war. It was before they had an automated war going, you know. So they were losing a lot of soldiers and they figured they could, you know, dispense with them, you know, because they're all just, you know, poor working people or yeah. people without jobs you know yeah. and so they didn't care if they lost that many soldiers they were willing to sacrifice them right so uh, over the course of your involvement in this stuff uh, what has changed really has it has the sort of political activism or protest movements has it changed at all since 19 yeah 1960s? you know in the 60s even though we were very uh, active you know i'd say that we had about a 20 percent sympathy level in the in the population we were relatively isolated yeah then this percentage with the change of generations has grown. Now I'd say we're at about 50, 60 yeah. percent, you know, of popular sympathy. Oh, that's interesting. And during the general strike, we broke through the majority, you know, and uh, we had, you know, the general, uh, oh, that's just the... Uh, Not a police helicopter. Uh, another police helicopter, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they have two. Oh, really? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, th we th I think we broke through the, the uh, midpoint, you know, during the general strike when we got the popular sympathy of people clanging on their pots, you know, every evening yeah. at 8 o'clock, which went on for about a month. Yeah. I remember, I'm from Edmonton, and I remember seeing it on the news and stuff. And yeah, and then people were coming out spontaneously every yeah. evening at 8 o'clock, you know, demonstrating and running around the streets, you know, and the police couldn't stop it. Yeah. They just followed around, you know, 
Yeah, I guess that's sort of all I'm, all the questions I sort of had. I was just looking for the way that people come out and try and keep an eye on the police. So unless you have anything else to add, I guess. Uh... Well, what's going to happen now? Okay, you know, now we have a majority government for four years, the Liberal Party, you know, which are going to impose austerity and make everybody very angry. Now, are we going to settle for this? No. The only way around uh, the National Assembly with a Liberal majority now is to uh, construct a constituent assembly which forms another house of governance with uh, direct democracy, proportional representation, and we're going to, uh, we're moving towards a convergence of tendencies which are willing to build this kind of constituent assembly, which will have as, as its responsibility the writing of a constitution for Quebec and will achieve a consensus of opinion as to what Quebec is going to do and how it's going to negotiate with Canada or, you know, what status it's going to seek internationally. Okay? So this is the way out of the impasse that we have presented before us right now. So I wanted to uh, announce that as a, as a, a prevision, a prévision, a prescience, uh, which is uh, going to be happening for sure. Interesting. Great. Well, thank you very much. I do appreciate you taking the time. Very good. Thank you. Right. What's your name? Tyler Dawson. Tyler Dawson. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, Wait.